Good morning, I'm Emma Steve and welcome to News That Matters. Today is our land safe. Are you and your family at risk from heavy metal toxicity? The toxicity of our city, of our city. Well, the presence of heavy metals such as lead, arsenic and mercury, which are some of the most hazardous heavy metals, are being found in plants and soils at extreme levels. The question is, where do these heavy metals come from? We asked exactly that to Dr. Paul Evergreen from Friends of the Earth. Dr. Evergreen, welcome. Thank you, Anna. Well, yes, it is true that soils can contain high levels of heavy metals, but this can actually occur naturally due to the weathering of rocks. However, evidence suggests that the main causes of heavy metals into the environment are actually from industry, agriculture and other anthropogenic activities. The application of sewage sludge and other such agrochemicals in modern agriculture is a major source of heavy metals. Sludge is solid waste resulting from the treatment of effluents from both industry and domestic waste. It was reported in the year 2003 that 47% of all sewage sludge was applied to the land annually. This is an incredible amount. The main reason for sewage sludge being applied to the land is to return fertility and nutrients to the soil. Unfortunately, this leads to the build-up of heavy metals for plant uptake. As for industries such as mining or metal processing, leaks or direct discharges from these can cause long-term contamination. Certain metals occur in such concentrations that they cannot be degraded naturally and removal can be very expensive. Dr. Everdeen, thank you. You're welcome. There is a concern that heavy metals may be taken up by crops and enter the human food chain. Let's join my news correspondent, Theresa Green, in a research centre in Nottingham. Plants and habits full of containing heavy metals, but how do they react to such a toxic environment? I'm here in sunny Nottingham to find out. This is a healthy point texture. This is the same plant, however, that has been affected by arsenic toxicity. As you can see, it's not looking very healthy. Some trees have been found to contain so much arsenic that just one tablespoon of the ash will be enough to cure a fully grown man. Mercury, another heavy metal used in thermometers and in tea fillings, has also found, been found to affect plant growth and plant development. Another classic example is aluminium toxicity, which has used crop yields considerably. A solution for this is to add lime to the soil, but this is out of prices for most farmers in developing countries. Thank you, Therese. We have managed to get an exclusive interview with one of our top researchers in the area, Sir Professor Bill Bobby Baker at his research station in Edinburgh. So, Professor, please explain, is heavy metal toxicity really such a threat to us? My research indicates that relatively low concentrations of heavy metals can cause a whole multitude of diseases due to their interaction with enzymes and other cellular components. There is strong evidence that metals can cause different types of diseases. Drinking alcohol is not the only thing that can damage your liver. Uh, cadmium can cause liver damage uh, and there is also well documented evidence that including my poor late grandmothers who passed away uh, indicating a correlation between high aluminium levels in the brain and Alzheimer's disease not to mention the huge array of cancers that can be caused by carcinogenic metals if ingested in your food heavy metals enter our bodies in the food we eat. As you can see from this diagram, plants grown on contaminated soils um, will uptake heavy metals. These plants in turn can be eaten by humans or livestock, which can ultimately lead to larger and far more dangerous quantities being found in the people like you, me, and even my dear late grandmother. The level of heavy metals increasing as they travel up through the food chain is known as biomagnification. This is a risk to public health. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Now, some plants can tolerate and even accumulate heavy metals in their tissues. We now go to Jean Tinker from the Institute of Phytoremediation to explain further.
Good morning. The type of plants that you are referring to have tremendous potential for application in the environment for cleaning up heavy metals from soil, water and even the air. This technique is termed phytoremediation and is an area of current research that has increased substantially over the last decade. This process is a much cheaper alternative to the traditional heavy metal removal techniques like excavation and landfill and is far less destructive, providing a much better public image. Phytoremediation has been successfully implemented in a few areas already, a good example being the Chernobyl disaster of 1986, where sunflowers used to detoxify uranium in groundwater. The plants that have so far been experimented on for phytoremediation have unfortunately been slow growing and small, but hopefully selective breeding or gene technology can help improve this problem. So, phytoremediation may help clean up heavy metals from the soil, but surely prevention is better than cure. Can industry and agriculture clean up their act? That's all from us here on News That Matters. Have a good afternoon.